we're going to begin talking about post-production and you want to try and avoid it as much as possible. You want to try and get everything right as best you can when you're working on something so you don't have to go into post-production. A lot of times it'll be necessary to know how to use post-production techniques to get the work that your clients want. I'm going to start off with this rooftop video clip. It's just a drone flying over a rooftop. A lot of times people want text parented to the camera motion. You see it a lot in sequences for titles and movie intros. So we're going to start off with learning how to track a camera using one point. So I select my clip, right click, choose track and stabilize, track motion. And there by default is my one track point. This is moving in a steady line, so I only need one track point. This inside box is what the computer will be looking for. And this outside box is the amount of space it'll be looking for in it. If I move over to the edge, I get a white selection, and that is for moving that. If I get the black arrow, that's for moving the entire piece. So I'm gonna put mine right here and set it down there with the move tool once I was inside. That's what moves it. Okay, so I've got my track point. I'm going to add a null at this point. I can go layer, new, null, or I could right click in the empty space and get a null that way. So we've got a track point, and this is the beginning of the clip. You want to make sure the thing you want to track is already in the frame. You've got good focus, and you know, there's lots of contrast. So we're good to go. I choose track. Forward. I'm going to analyze forward here. I clip that. I click that. And once this goes off the screen, I'm going to want to stop it. So I'm going to track forward some more. I'm going to stop again. And you can see there's the straight path. Our track is working. Here's where it's going to get a little tricky. This part will go off the screen. So I'm going to need to stop as close to that point so I have fewer points to fix afterward. So I'm going to track forward again and then stop. We tracked our path. Now we need to say edit target. Click there. The null that I just did is what I want. I click OK. And my final step is to click apply. X and Y is good. I hit OK. So now we're back. First, it opened up in the layer to edit the video clip. Now we're back in our main composition. So I'm going to rewind to the beginning, place my text. And if you want, at this point, you can rotate it to make it fit in the scene better, or we can 3D enable the null. I'm going to click on my switches, 3D enable the null, 3D enable this. I'm going to tilt it a little bit. Make it sit in the shot a little better. I'll use my arrows to position it. And lastly, so I've got my perspective looking the way I want. I'm going to make it a color that we can see easily. Um, let's try bright orange, and I'll try a nice bold font. There's our text. You could pretend this is a title or someone's name in a credit sequence. Now all I have to do is parent my text to the null. I could use my pick, whip, and drag, or I could just use the drop-down menu right here. So now this is parented to the null, which is tracking the motion of the shot. In the camera so I hit the spacebar to preview and just like magic there it is and obviously once it gets to the edge there's gonna be a little bit of trouble so I hit I could split this here command shift D then go forward a few frames and continue it off over whatever amount of time I need that's too drastic so if I hit you oh, do I did not position keyframe that. So I click position here, go forward a little bit, move it some more. So now it's moving. That's a bit too fast, so I'm going to move my keyframe. That's the fast fix for it. Good. And that can go forward a little bit more and then fully move it off the screen. Part of the reason that is on there so much is the rotation I gave it. Okay, so that's one point track. I'm going to use this clip for two point tracking. So you can see the camera is turning to the side. 
So I'm going to trim this here using Alt and the bracket key. And we'll go to about here. Alt and the other bracket. So I trimmed the in point and the out point for the layer. I'm going to move it over to the beginning. If I hit the bracket next to the letter P, it will snap it to where you see it right here. Now I'm looking straight at the camera. I'm going to right click, track and stabilize, track motion. This time I'm going to track rotation. I don't need scale for this, it's just moving side to side. So now I have two track points. We can see where we want to put them. I think we might get a cleaner track putting them here than on the lens, tracking the text. So I move both my points here, and I'm going to track backwards at this point because I need to go in that direction. And as you can see, it's working pretty well. So I can hit stop because it's fully off the screen. And now I'm going to add my null. So I right clicked, did new null, or I could just go layer new null from up here. There's my null. I'm going to edit my target, choose my null, hit OK, and then click apply. So now I can add whatever I want there. I'll put the text right here. Parent the text to the null with my pick whip by clicking and dragging. Now let's 3D enable both of those. Now it's working a little bit better. So that's a two point track because you're using two points to track with. The last tracking I'm going to go over is face tracking. So I've got my clip. I'm going to duplicate it, Command D, so there's something below it. Get rid of the sound. For this, I need to draw a mask. So I draw an oval and I make sure I cover my whole head like such. And you want a resting pose where you're looking straight at the camera, your eyes aren't blinking, you're not smiling, you're not frowning. This is called a resting pose. So I've got my mask and I've got my resting pose. In my tracker window, I now have face tracking. So there's face tracking outline only, which would be the shape of my head. And then there's detailed, which is what's inside my head, like the eyes and the nose and the mouth, the corner of all that. So I'm going to click set rest pose. Now track forward. And there's my tracking points. I'll go back a little bit. It tracks your pupil, the edges of your eye, the corners and middle of your eyebrows. So this is for special effects and motion graphics and ways of adding things to the face. So for example, if I were to put, let me duplicate this one more time. So it's unedited. No, I'm not going to duplicate it. All right. So for example, if I go to my effects and I add bulge, throw that on here, I'm going to have the bulge center on my eye. Now, even though this is the left side of the screen, this is my right eye because I'm facing the camera. So I'm going to track this effect to my right eye pupil. So to demonstrate what it does, make it a little bit larger. Drastically change the bulge height. Okay, so bulge center. I'm going to hold down Alt or Option, click on that stopwatch. Now I've got an expression. I'm going to parent using the pick whip inside the expression field. I'm going to parent that to my right eye pupil. I'm going to need to duplicate this effect. I'm going to need to duplicate this because I didn't track the bottom one. So on this one, I'm going to get rid of bulge. Okay, so this has my tracking points. There they are. This has my effect. Left that step out. Okay, so. Let 
Here's my pick whip. Now I can drag down to the tracking point. So I did have to duplicate the layer. That's where I went wrong. I went the right pupil. It's now parented to the right pupil. I click out of the expression field. So now when I scrub through, the effect moves with my head because it is now following that track point like such. That's an example of face tracking and tying an effect to your tracking points. Next, we're going to move on to the roto brush. I'm going to use this chip blue log clip. And as I mentioned in class, the video format that captures the most data for light is raw. Next to that is log. This is a log clip. It was shot with a Fuji camera, so it's Fuji log. You can sometimes find the LUTs for the cameras that you shot with. And I put this in the, and I put the LUT for this in Put the LUT we're going to need in Canvas for everybody. So you need Lumetri Color, Basic Correction. Under Input LUT, we're going to choose the one for the Fuji. Right there. And already you can see a huge difference. I'm going to adjust the temperature a little bit. And I'm going to increase the contrast a little, as well as the saturation. Now, when you're doing rotoscoping, you can't have a flat image like with the log or raw. You got to have some saturation, some contrast, crisp, sharp edges. And uh, you also have to be at full preview res for this to work. So I've got my chip and now I'm ready to start roto brushing. So I need to double click. When we're doing tracking, we didn't have to double click. When we were doing tracking, we did not have to do when we were doing tracking, we did not have to double click, but for roto brushing, you do have to double click to enter the layer for that video clip. Your roto brush is right here. And I'm going to keep this size, but if you hold down control or command and you click and drag from side to side, it changes the size of your brush. So that's hold down command and click and drag from side to side. Green adds, red subtracts. So you don't want to go to the edges, but I'm fine just going right down the middle and I need to get a little bit more. So I'm going to drag over there a little bit more. I'm going to drag there. That's looking pretty good. I'm going to go beyond what I need to show you how to subtract. So I'm going to go out a little bit. I don't want that. So if I hold down alt or option, the brush changes from red to green to subtract. So I keep going back in and there we go. That's looking pretty good. So I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to track forward a little bit by moving my playhead. My roto is still on. It's looking good. I'll go forward a little bit more. And a little bit more. And as I change my perspective, it's still holding on pretty good. Fast motion like motion blur can mess up your roto brushing. But it's holding on pretty good. The new roto brush is working pretty nicely. And I'm going to stop there. When you're all done and you've done as much as you need to, click the freeze button down here and it'll freeze your frames. Now that's done, I can close out of my layer window and here is my rotoed out chip. I could put anything I want behind it, like a solid. I can put whatever went behind it, like a, a solid layer. Place that behind my chip. You've seen this in commercials and movies a lot. Credit sequences in commercials. But it's basically how you get text or whatever you want to go behind a character. You could also use it for special effects if you need to. Like that. That's the roto brush. Now we're going to move on to 
Advanced Roto Brush. For this, we're going to use this log footage of me shot with the same camera. So I can grab my LUT here, copy it, paste it on here because it's the same camera, and then adjust it as need be. That's good enough for this tracking. That's good enough for this roto brushing. Remember, you want to be at full res. So I'm going to double click on my clip, grab my roto brush, drag down. Okay, got a lot of me. I don't need this part over here. So I'm going to hold down Alt or Option and delete that. That's good. I missed part of my ear. That's good. I'm going to hold down command and drag sideways with my mouse to change the size of my brush. Get a little bit more of my hair. That's fine. This is not my hair up here. I'm going to get rid of that by holding down alt to subtract. Got to get rid of this right over here. And this little part right here. Let's try that right there. Okay, I'm happy with that. So. That's basic roto, but for things like hair and fur, you need some more finesse. So if I click and hold down on my roto brush tool, I get the refine edge tool. I'm going to hold down command, drag sideways so it's a little bit larger, and I'll zoom in a bit. For this, I'm going to be about on the center edge. I'm going to get my hair. There we go. Just like a mask in Photoshop, white reveals, black conceals. What's white will be visible. What's black will be invisible. I'm going to move my playhead a couple frames. Zoom out. Now that I've moved my playhead a few frames, I can add some extra features. Reduce chatter will clean up the edges a little bit more right there. Propagation, if I click view search region, it's showing me this green box. If I shrink it down, it's less. Now if I click on Enable Classic Controls, we're seeing this yellow here. Let's try and reduce that radius some more. Okay, now it's looking at less of my head. That's good. So I'm going to click off of those two. And then under my Refine Edge, I'm going to smooth that a little bit. And I'm fine with that. Let's not use motion blur because I'm not moving that fast. So I'm going to keep tracking forward now. I'm going to watch and make sure that the roto holds and it's looking good. So once you've gone through the whole thing, you click the freeze button and go back to After Effects. So now I click there to get on my layer. I'm back here. And if I duplicated my video clip, you would have seen the original behind me, but I could add whatever I want behind it now. Just like before. Like that. And that's basically how they do it in movie credit sequences and TV commercials, where you separate the person out and you put text behind them whenever it was not shot on a green screen. You need to rotoscope it. And this held up pretty nicely. Uh, you could always go in and try and make some adjustments later on if you need to. But uh, like I said, not half bad for just laying a track a little bit.
I'm going to go back to my chip and do the final thing, content aware fill. I'm going to grab my Lumetri color and put it on here. Now, content aware, we did not get to in lab. Content aware, we did not get to that night, but I'm going to put it in here just so it's all together so we can tackle Mocha separately Thursday. I'm going to duplicate my clip just so I've got, you know, the original behind it. And I'm going to draw a mask around what I want to be removed, which will be the chip and my fingers. So this is selected. So when I make my mask, it's masking around on that video layer. And I'm using as few points as possible so I don't have to track that many points. I hit M for math. I hit M for mask. As I go forward, I've got to make sure everything stays masked. Now, with that keyframe selected, I can move the entire mask. So I add a keyframe that's selected. I can add the whole mask. That just saves me some time. But if I wanted to adjust a point, I would hold down shift and get the point I want, and move that out a little bit. That's the other way of working. Go we'll track forward a little bit more. It's still staying in the mask. Now at this point, I'm going to make the mask a little wider, just to be on the safe side. And I'll add a little bit more up here. Remember, you got to have that mask path stopwatch clicked on. I'm going to choose add from the drop down in my mask options. Then I'm going to click on the inverted button right there. I'm going to hide that layer below and now you can see the alpha. So that's what was removed. I'm going to go window. Now I'm going to go window content aware fill. My my alpha expansion is good because I had spare room on each side when I when I made my mask, so that's fine. Object is for removing an object. Surface is for removing something from a surface like a like text on a sign or a billboard. Edge blend would be finding the pixels along the edge and filling them towards the inside. And it's like removing text from a paper or a magazine. We're doing object for this because we're removing an object. We're doing the entire work area, which is fine. And now we're going to click. And now we're going to click on the generate fill layer button. Now there's that on top of my video clip. And as you can see, it is still analyzing. So we need to wait for that to get done running. That's why this layer is blank. I clicked on lighting correction moderate because there's some lighting inconsistency on the wall. And just like that, the chip has been removed. And you can see there's some inconsistency here. So trying different size masks will help, but I just did this quick and dirty just so that you could learn the technique. So that is one point tracking, two point tracking, face tracking, and content aware fill. This Thursday, we'll start with Mocha.